Today we are looking at five common tone myths about Josh Groban's guitar rig. No we're not, it's Josh Homme. Yeah. The first myth and this is one that I hear all the time on my Queens videos and that is that Josh used fuzz pedals for his main sound early on in his career and by that I mean Caius and the first Queens albums. Often a Big Muff Pie has been mentioned as his go to fuzz. That is not correct but I understand why some people got that idea in the first place. The sounds are very big sounding and some of them do have a fuzz like character especially if you listen to his tone in the Kaios era. I've done a video about his main amp back then, a Tubeworks RT2100 and it does sound fuzzy on certain settings. So again, no wonder why some people thought that in the beginning, but after that it has just become a myth that people aren't really looking into or investigating. They just throw it out there, you know, like some people like to do in the comment sections of YouTube videos and on forums. Later on in his career we have seen Josh with some fuzz pedals, maybe most noticeable the full tone ultimate octave that he uses on the solo of uh, Little Sister. <laughs> I've seen a super fuss on his board also, which I think belongs to Alan Johannes. And he has also been spotted with a Big Muff or a Big Muff style fuss on his board lately. Uh, this one is most likely used for bits and pieces from the newer albums, but his main rhythm tone has never been a fuss pedal. Nope. The second myth is sort of tied together with the first one because it's often mentioned together with the fuzz thing and that is that you will have to use the neck pickup to get the Queen's sound. Well in Caius Josh did mostly use the neck pickup so the myth might have started there but with Queen's he's using the bridge pickup most of the time. I've seen him flip over to neck sometimes again with a little sister solo for example but I would say it's bridge not 99% of the time. His sound has always been kind of dark so that might also be a part of why the myth will not go away. There's a lot of focus on mids and low mids in his tone, something some people might connect to the use of neck pickups but yeah, bridge pickup is the way to go and if you find it too bright turn down the tone control on your guitar a bit instead that helps. By the way thanks for all the likes, support and super thanks on these videos. You are you're awesome and I'm forever grateful that you are watching living room gear demos which isn't even in a living room. Such a fraud. Thank you. Next one is kind of silly and I don't know where people get this idea from but a lot of people are telling me to tune to drop C for the early queen stuff and the Kaya stuff. I think I've even seen one of the sound like episodes from Andertons that they tuned to drop C. I'd never seen Josh tune to drop C but he's tuning to C standard. So you tune your guitar two full steps down from E standard and you play the guitar as you would play it in E standard but it's two steps down. And I have nothing against drop C or drop tunings but it would be very difficult to play the C standard riffs from Queens correctly in a drop tuning and drop tuning sort of leads to a more heavy style of playing which isn't quite right for the Queen stuff. Josh's style is not very like early metal inspired at all. The tuning down two steps is sort of taking care of the heaviness whilst he is playing like he would have played in E standard if you get what I mean. On later album you mostly see E standard. I've also seen open G, E flat and D standard on the later albums. You need to use bass amps to get good Queens of the Stone Age sounds. And uh, nope, but Josh, Josh, but Josh did use some bass amps and cabinets early on, but not as much as a lot of people think. With Caius, he did often use bass cabinets together with guitar heads, and I think this is where the myth most likely started. It looked like a bass rig, so yeah. Later in Queens he did often use an Ampeg V for B which is a bass amp, he used that for a guitar but I would say that he probably used an Ampeg V4 more than the V4B. The V4 is the guitar version of the V4B. 
Eric Valentine, the producer on Songs for the Deaf, said that Josh used an Ampeg V4B as his main amp when they recorded the drums on Deaf like the main amp that he played when the band tracked together, and that Josh intended that amp to be the main guitar sound on Songs for the Deaf, but they later found that it didn't sound right, it was too muddy and too fussy, so they went with other Ampeg options, and like the PVs and the Tubergs. I did a whole video on that if you want to explore those sounds and amps even more, yeah. And also, Josh's main live amp for many years has been the Ampeg VT40. And I also think that has contributed to the myth that he uses bass amps live. When people see an Ampeg, they think it's a bass amp. Ampeg, they are not really known for making guitar amps, so it kind of makes sense that people mistake them for bass amps when they see them on stage. Yeah. And the last myth is sort of a new one and people have been blasting my comment sections for about a year now telling me that the secret to Josh's guitar tone is the PV Decade. It's funny how much some people enjoy sharing knowledge when they think they can prove someone wrong. Pretty much as I'm doing in this video honestly. This myth or I would say partly myth started when producer Mark Ronson's TV series Watch the Sound aired on Apple TV+. Plus. He did an episode about distortion and in that episode he interviewed Josh Hami. Since Josh always has been very secretive about his tone, Mark asked him what his secret was and Josh finally seemed willing to share and he picked up this small PV combo that everybody owned in the 90s and that was the PV decade. Well, it has been documented that this amp has been used on Queen's recordings. Eric Valentine again did a detailed video on how No One Knows was recorded and in that video he showed how they used the decade on Songs for the Deaf, but they used it for bass in conjunction with two other bass amps. Uh, later I have seen footage of the decade at the end of the guitar amp lineup for when they did overdubs on the record also, but I highly doubt that they used it for any of the big guitar sounds. I have a fellow Queen tone researcher from Italy that often emails me very good intel and he has a theory that it maybe was used for the guitar solo for God is in the radio and I think that is a good theory. As for albums after that I don't really know. The decade has a character that is fairly easy to recognize and I think I can sort of hear it on the last three albums maybe, maybe. But also Mark Ronson did produce the latest Queen's album, Villains. And if they used the decade on that album, why would he be surprised when Josh brought out the amp on the TV show? He is a professional in the music and TV industry, so maybe he just played surprised uh, for the camera, but I tend to believe that they didn't use the amp on Villains. Again, Josh is secretive about his stuff and he always uh, throws curveballs to keep people from copying him and showing people that amp isn't directly lying, but it's also not the whole truth, I think. And after this, uh, the prices on the decade spiked on reverb and then I did a video on it, which certainly didn't help with the prices and now it's close to impossible to get one. Yeah. It is kind of funny that an amp that everyone is almost traumatized by using in their bedroom back then, all of a sudden becomes a good amp just because an important person tells them that it's good. The decade is indeed a fun and interesting uh, sounding amp and it's great for bass, but I would argue that you can do the same with many different small practice transistor amps. Some of them people will most likely throw at you for free. Yep. I'm trying to reach 14 million subs on the channel, so please subscribe if you haven't already, leave a like and comment something. Just say something in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.